Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Game number two of this best of three series between Power Rangers and Alliance. We are here in the Dota 2 Asia Championships. This is the first set of semifinals. Not going in order today, but it is our last best of three. And, well, could possibly be our last game of the day. LD, what's going on, man? First pick, Wisp. Mm. Well, this looks like the Alliance of old. Yeah. <laughs> this is something f fresh and different. But I like the way Power Alliances Rangers res respond. Mm -hmm. They get... An off laner that we saw last game, Tidehunter matches up pretty well against Wisp in lane. He did struggle more because of the gyrocopter factor, but um, was able to kill the Wisp off a few times early with the help of his team. And it was only later that the, the Wisp combo got out of control. Zeus also fantastic against Wisp. What you, you want heavy Throat. burst against this hero. I like that choice. Alliance will go back for Jug. Mm. Blade Fury to dodge Ravage. Dyer Omni Slash, very nice with the Wisp. Uh, just to mo move you around the map, let you set up easy kills. So there's some good synergy here for both teams. Mm -hmm. And different approaches. Obviously, Power Rangers thus far very heavy on the team fight, burst damage. Alliance, more of the spread the map, pick off, gank type style. But it's only yeah. two picks in. Alliances Lots of ways for this to go. To Absolutely. Bad. And Power Rangers did win game one, regardless of what the in-game ticker says. We know Power Rangers are the victors, and they are one game away or one victory away, I should say, from uh, securing a spot in the uh, the winner's finals. Uh, one one series away from the grand Ten finals at that point. Remaining. So lots on the line here. Zeus tied. We've seen this. And, and it's worth mentioning, since we haven't yet, remaining. that uh, second and third in Europe qualify for the wild card, which means ah. you still go to China. You're not guaranteed to be in the main group stage, but you get, that, you get that paid trip there. Um, and then just have to play your way in. Similar to TI4. I mean, people are calling it a mini TI. That's one of the other ways it resembles it. So, yeah. It's, a, it's cool for me. Winning this series means you go to China. Yeah. Just doesn't does mean maybe you don't play in the main event, though. But you're still, that's at least the, the right step. So. And you're guaranteed a small amount of prize money. 0.55%, I believe, that is for the wild card teams. Or maybe it's only for the, the top two that don't make it. I'm not 100% sure about that. But still, uh, quite a bit on the line, and again, this interesting alliance. I uh, oh, know, actually, yeah, the wa the wildcard teams that don't qualify do get money. So. Okay, cool. Sixty-seven hundred dollars. Not bad, and it still has potential Five to grow. So. Remaining. All right, so a lot of ways this draft can go, like you mentioned. Zeus Tide Hunter, we've seen uh, these heroes rise in popularity, and there you go, Old Frosty, ancient apple. So good with Zeus. Ice Vortex makes him hit like a monster. You drop a nice Vortex Lightning Bolt, that hero is just... Th this Wisp is going to yeah, have a very tough game. Also very good against Juggernaut and Wisp. Uh, counteracts the healing ward a bit. And, yes. uh, the healing and from the Wisp. Tether. I really like Ancient Apparition a lot it's a, here. It's a win on both fronts. Great with their now, team and great against Now that the... said, he is total food for Omni Slash. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> yeah. pretty squishy, low base armor. Ten and they are pretty heavy remaining. on the magic damage here right now, which Juggernaut on paper is still pretty good against with Blade Five Fury. So. remaining. <laughs> Both teams with some really cool synergies here, but let's see how the draft Reserve develops further. Time. So far, a lot of global from Power Rangers. Spectre is out there as an option. Also, later on in the game, just destroys Wisp. Something that you could go for, and also haunt pretty good against Omni Slash in mm -hmm. general. So, Yep. They could look at... Yeah, I guess Spectre could be pretty good here. It, it, would, be, it would be a little bit passive and i have seen juggernauts just run over specters because as we've seen juggernaut gets online early mm -hmm. ush did it the other day went for his treads mask of madness he soloed roche while the specter was way too weak to fight then Dyer he got a shadow blade and was just running through the enemy jungle <laughs> constantly threatening to kill him forcing support rotations and yeah single-handedly just kept their team down yeah so I feel like if you want to do that against a spec, you need somebody that can push a little bit. Because Juggernaut can do well killing, but not the best at pushing in those those early levels. And Power Rangers uh, go for the Rubik. I was going to say, I wonder if Alliance would consider, just for the spell shield to... Uh, or the extra magic resistance for the team, just to help mitigate some of what Power Rangers are throwing their way, but... Uh, Rubik. Uh, again, it's a two-faced win. P a potential deny pick, if that's something Alliance were thinking of, if they wanted to run either a core line or a core Rubik. But great synergy with Ancient Apparition. We've seen this support deal a lot. Easy cold feet procs with the telekinesis. And the 600 range here as well to yep. just get Ten more chilling touch auto remaining. attacks off. Yeah, and the Ice Vortex, like you talked about, buffs up that Fade Bolt a little bit. Five every every little bit helps in those A lot uh, of good spells to steal, fights. even though there's no huge Wombo combo style ultimates. There's Blade Fury's great. Omni Slash is great. Healy Ward's great. Dire team uh, all of Lion's spells are pretty good except for Mana Drain, which is kind of useless, and Wisp spells are not that, that great to skill. Yeah. Relocate can be okay. Yeah, it can be cheeky. It can be fun. But Wind Ranger, an interesting Alliances fourth choice for Alliance. Hmm. And I wonder if this is their off lane or their mid. 
Generally, when we see Wind Ranger, it's been in a core role, which yeah. it should be this game because they already have the unless they want to run a lion mid, which we don't see right now. He's just too good as a support. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would expect a mid ranger, a mid ranger, <laughs> a mid ranger, <laughs> a mid ranger, <laughs> juggernaut one position, Five probably safe remaining. lane. Yeah. There is some slight aggressive potential here from Alliance, but you're going aggressive into chilling touch, Reserve and that's always time. dangerous. Yeah. Um, Ten seconds weird, weird remaining. mechanics question for you, LD. Uh oh. Centaur Stampede, does that work with Blade Fury at all? Dire you don't get any movement pick. speed buff. It's like a haste rune, right? It gets dispelled. Like if he's if Centaur Stampedes, then he Blade Furies, is he moving fast? Mm. I wanna say no. I'm pretty sure that that doesn't work because it's just too good. But that could be a, an option for Alliance here. If they're looking towards the off lane, Centaur could be could be fun. I like Centaur against Zeus, Ancient Apparition, and Rubik. Three heroes very susceptible to his his long range catch and ten seconds remaining. Eh, not bad against Tide, you know, if you can catch him, it's pretty good. I am not Five actually sure. Remaining. I'm I'm to be honest. That's that's one for the, the that, hive mind. Yeah, that's a that's a weird one. That's like an, again, Reserve one of those mechanics you, you just don't see those two on the same team as often. Centaur's kinda of fallen out of favor as Juggernaut has risen, so I'm I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Hmm. Viper band out. We have not seen much Viper. No. Is He's still he's he's a nice hero versus magic damage strats because you have the corrosive skin. So uh, something that Alliance could have run. It also synergizes well with Juggernaut with the this healing war just because he can push pretty effectively. And this Alliance one makes a lot of sense. They're gonna get that ancient apparition Whoa, void combo, my. mass AOE. Also the bash is magic damage, so it synergizes extremely well. Everything about this draft works well with the ice vortex. Mm -hmm. Good late game too. Uh, yeah. Decent versus Wisp. Uh, you relocate, quick Chrono, you're dead. Juggernaut versus Void is always interesting because it, it really can go either way. If Juggernaut gets off his Omni Slash, you're kind of helpless as a Void. If you, unless you can just time walk out, but if you've already used it to initiate and you don't get the Jug in Chrono, then you can be in a lot of trouble. Five mm -hmm. seconds um, it could go the other way, of course, where Void just Chronos him and destroys him. Ooh, so a Lions go the hard carry fifth pick in the Dusa, picking up the Gorgon. Hmm. All right. Stone Gaze is nice against Void. You jump in, you, you get off Stone Gaze even if he chronos, and he, do, he does have to back off. Also, a tanky carry, and you want tank against this much burst. Yes. You live through the chrono and the Ravage and the, the mass nukes, then you can turn the fights. Also good with Wisp. Uh, yeah. Bottle, you know, just giving him more mana. Uh, like, you use a bottle charge, it, gives, it gets you a lot more effective HP than on a regular hero because mm -hmm. of the mana shield. So it's a, it's a good synergy there. Yeah. But I, Power Rangers is just having this disgusting team fight. This is a, a real... I mean, as you pointed out, it's a very synergistic team. I mean, Zeus and Void together, a lot of just natural harmony there. With so it's actually an EGM Wind Ranger, actually. They're not going to run it for uh, potentially Pycat or Loda. Okay, so probably Pycat in the safe Prepare lane with Ake, and then they'll be joined by Minots. Loda will... Are they going to duel lane this? I will see. I want to point out Cheshire Cat tp down bottom already, and he's yeah. just dropped an Observer Ward here, so... Big commitment to get that one out, and an important ward. You're up against Lion Wisp, both supports very level dependent, so yeah. I, I do I like that move, and it's we'll have to see if they're able to deward this. Yeah, yeah, Blade Fury. I'm pretty sure it does dispel the the Centaur Stampede. Okay, it, it gets. I think it like gives you the cleanse thing beforehand, right? So it gets rid of all your your shit. So oh. just to follow up on that one, one of those weird. Like, every so often, you have one of those weird thoughts, like, hey, that'd be kind of cool if you could stampede a Juggernaut, right? Oh, unfortunately, that's not a thing. What a bummer. Anyway, all right. The more you know. <laughs> the more you know, right? So they do break the trees here for Alliance. and 30 seconds Two heroes that can use these really well. The Medusa, the Jug can farm the stacks. Obviously, Wisp wants the levels. <coughs> Pretty good. Lion, not that great at clearing them, but it can also benefit heavily from the levels. I want to mention, though, I don't think there's anyone who's going to be able to buy sentries here for Alliance because Wisp will rush the bottle, and Lion does not have any gold for them right now. He's bought quite a bit of regen. Two clarity, salve, and tango. We do not see the boots rush, which you can only really get away with when someone else will buy wards and stuff, begins. which might not said to do this game, so. Yeah, both dire Time observers have come down. They'll get vision at the top rune, and then the one we saw placed nice and early, and I think this observer will be a, a little tricky for him. Radiant, they'll get their first observer down in the lane in the bottom, and then another one outside of their ancients get some vision of that top rune and peek into that mid lane. So for lines, how will the lanes settle out? It will be Minots and Loda in the bottom. Uh, Ake will be stacking and whatnot in the jungle and helping Pycat mid. So do some mid with a Wisp back up and then that'll put uh, EGM, aka Potato, on the uh, offlane Wind Ranger there. So interesting lane setup. Two of the saddest auto attackers you'll ever see train blows here. <laughs>
<laughs> okay with the 47 base damage. Shade Flow matching him with 47 of his own. <laughs> That's, they're pretty pathetic, I gotta say. Yeah, Pie Cat, the, the big victory there. Bottom lane, though. Blade Fury comes out onto Cheshire Cat. Ooh. Don't They need some good body blocks here to get a kill, and they're getting them from Loda. Wow. Nicely done, even with the boots first, first they'll end up going down. Beautifully done by Loda. That is that is exactly how you want that play to go. Minots will be the one to draw the first blood again on the Lion, and that will be nice early boots for him here. And on top of the first blood, they are doing some serious stack Dota right now. Ancients being stacked by EGM. The double stack already from the mid lane by the Wisp. This oh. reminds me of the Lions of old, just the ultra ultra greed. Yeah, Seneko coming in, harassing back EGM. It's the, the battle of the level ones here, but uh-oh, he's got a friend. Ake tethers over the ravine. EGM will try to chase him down with win run, but no other abilities in his arsenal. Ake also only level one here, so just tether. J4 on his way in, throws out a chilling touch, hoping to make a turn, but Seneko gets caught on the little whip there. You're gonna go and for it more? Be the end of him. EGM just continuing to uh, win run forward. J4, where's he going? Ditya will rotate down over. Time walk forward, goes on to EGM. The Wisp, not enough to keep uh -oh. him alive. J4 trying to bait him out. Can Ake bring him down? No, he cannot. J4 turns and finishes him off. And PR get a couple of kills out. That was a they, really weird That exchange. was a long chase. Rubik comes in over here trying to mess with the Windranger. They end up going all oh. the way up here, man. <laughs> That's a journey around the world Double and then some. Damage. And EGM ends up in the lane. So he's like, I guess I'll stay here for a little I, bit. I, I, I'm not really sure who won that fight based on how much time it took and all the rotations. It's kind of it's a hard to even. say, to yeah. be honest. Okay. Wisp was taken away from stacking duties after that, so I guess you miss out on a bit of economy oh, if you like. Cheshire Cat, double damage rune on My Nuts. He gets hit by an anchor smash, but this could still be the end of the tide yet again. Can My Nuts get in position to finish him off? No, he gets juked around and will not find the kill. Close Meanwhile, Inch Apparition gonna buy his boot sentry and denies himself to neutral, okay. so gets the gets the free fountain trip. Yeah, intentional suicide there. Loses sixty gold. Nothing too crazy. Maybe he's just showing the mud golem some love. <laughs> hey, you guys want a hug? I'm icy. Hi, friends. Icy hot. Whoa, watch out. <laughs> Did you raw on the void? Oh, wow. First item, Mask of Madness. Okay. I feel like you saw this from Mask Eternal. Boots yeah, it's pretty rare. I did see Eternal Envy go for it the other day, though. Okay. Naked Mask of Madness. Yeah, I mean, the main, nice lane, the main nice thing is you can just go straight to the woods and give your support to the lane. And if you see that in your alliance, ideally you'd want to go and Dyer's punish it and quickly gank, you know, say that Ancient Apparition uh, or Rubik if they're just sitting top. But both of these supports do need their levels. The other thing with the Mask of Madness uh, is it does open up a potentially erosion ult mid lane. Hold that thought. Impale coming out into Shachlow. TP rotation is on the way. Looks like Rubik is the one to join the party. Shachlow may actually survive. Oh, not quite. The Mystic Snake will bring him down. It will cost Ake his life. So it's a one for one there. Obvious advantage for Alliance as Seneko takes over the mid lane and will go blow for blow with Pycat. Still, my nuts on the horizon has all that regen at his disposal and not going to reinitiate. Instead, we'll camp out the four-minute rune. This line is still only level one. They have one. two level one heroes. Yeah, he is hoping win. for a bounty rune Top here. Top rune. Oh, Sonico. Just be able to quickly grab this invisor and back off. Yeah, my nuts actually gets the bounty he was hoping for and does ding level two, but eek, these alliance supports. EGM is getting nothing. Well, EG, yeah, technically not. He's he's going to be a support at this rate. <laughs> level one, four minutes in. This is he, not shaping up well. He was like, I don't know if you caught it, but he was doing that little thing where he's like standing here and shooting at the ancients, but at a time when it wasn't stacking it, just like, you know, the, like 20 seconds into the minute. Well, he was just trying to farm them, but it's very... Yeah, but it's just it's, so slow. It used it? to be something that Funic would do a lot of for Navi back around TI3. Dyer's they would very frequently just entirely attack. abandon the lane. He'd sit over in the tree line, just plinking across, uh, constantly farm the Ancient. Juggernaut! It's fallen out of favor a lot. No, because the thing is, most heroes can just sit in the off lane now. You don't really... Back in TI3, it was very easy to zone out the enemy off laner because of the creep equilibrium and uh, just, the way the, just the way the games would develop in general. But now... Normally the creeps are close to your tower. Offlaners generally don't struggle this much to get in the lane. But he is starting to catch up now. We'll hit level two. Mm -hmm. The thing is, Void's about to get level six with Mask of Madness. So this Wind Ranger is gonna become a, a big pile of gold for him very soon. Yep. And going for the very aggressive build, no points in backtrack, maxing out the time lock, getting as much damage as possible, and you, you see the value of the Mask of Madness here and what it opens up for you against the neutrals. Pie Cat, big hard carry for Alliance, still farming up in the mid lane, almost level 6 himself, going for the Snake build with 3 points in it and uh, 2 stats right now, no early mana shield, obviously no split shot, 
and just sitting on power tread. So all things considered, Pycat is having an okay time in the mid lane, though. So is Shotchlow. He's only died once, and we'll have that Soul Ring on the way. Soul Ring now out for your Zeus, as you mentioned. Great spammer. So far, Ake getting good levels. He's level 4. That's probably the most important hero to get levels on for their team. Juggernaut has Omni Slash. Oh. Gonna run into the Tide Hunter here. Yeah, they're gonna drain his mana out. Uh, only level three on the Tide, not even close to Ravage. Yeah, that's that's we'll the thing back. is both offlaners are struggling. As much as EGM was not doing well in his offlane, neither is the Tide. And Cheshire Cat also only with the one set of Ancients so far, so uh, or the the one stack I should say. So mm -hmm. they'll need to they'll need to find some space for him to catch up later on, and perhaps they even send him towards this top lane when. The Yara's off in the woods, which he could be now. It looks like for the time being, Ancient Apparition will get his level 6. Yeah, I feel like this Mask and Madness build has worked out pretty well for the Void. Glenn's get net worth. Uh, kind of blow for blow with the Medusa, who's not gone for a farm accelerator of her own. Except, uh, well, Wisp stacking up the jungle. I guess you could call that a farm accelerator. It's Ake. Woo. Dipping down kind of low there, but it'll be okay. Looks like this is a good force stack. So Chrono Pike, uh, top lane onto oh. Potato. Gets caught out, and it's going to be a kill oh, for J4. And did yeah, uh, EGM trapped and back to the ancients where you just were as they will manage to bring down Cheshire Cat with an Omni Slash. Yep. I feel like every Juggernaut has a different skill build. I've seen Blade Fury Max with Healing Ward Max, value pointing crit. Radiant. I've seen 1-1-1 one, 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 and then attack. stats. I've seen crit max, 1-1-1 one, 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 and Healing Ward Blade Fury. There is just no consensus on how to sk skill this hero. This is one of the more well-rounded ones. 2-1-2 two, two with one point yeah, the I, stats this is my, seven. I don't this think is I've my ever... first 2 1 2 that I've seen. Yeah, with this is at level 7. That's what makes it a little funky with that early stat point, but y you need it so that you can omni slash and spin at level 6 without any extra stats. I would I would really like to see win rates on some of those different skill builds. And obviously, yeah, you know, yeah. there's there could be a lot of other data clouding the results. Calling K poptosis. Yeah, stop stop messing around in chat and get to work. We've got friend. we got a stats emergency a here, stat man. Stat emergency. <laughs> oh, the stat o'clock. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the thing is right now, Alliance are going to start farming big stacks pretty soon. You can see they just cleared out the one big camp. They can go for the single double stack here. They also can farm their triple stack Ancients fairly soon. And PR not as good at farming stacks. They have a Void who can go jungle with Mask Madness, but doesn't clear stacks. It's only Tidehunter really can. So if it turns into just a war of economy, I'm favoring Alliance and their ability to get ahead and stay ahead there. Yeah, neither side with any farming tools right now aside from stacking. So, But PR is going for some. J4 is building the Midas, so As attempting to make up for what they can't do naturally with some unnatural supplements. Wow, this is uh, pretty good Midas timing, it looks like, here for the Ancient Apparition. Again, this all this is all connected to the Mask of Madness Void Rush. Like that, That's why this works. And yeah, it's allowed him to move into the jungle, so now AA can stay in lane and actually find some fun. And they've backed it up well because they dropped this ward near the lane so that they know if Alliance... Of course, there's still the threat of a relocate, which is coming online fairly soon, but they would know if anyone just tried to TP top. So I really like the way PR is moving around their lanes and just how they're distributing the farm as efficiently as possible. Yep, Juggernaut uh, is going for his own Mask of Madness, now has the recipe delivered, and we'll start farming towards the Mask. So, Mask of Madness is all around, or uh -huh. Masks of Madness, I guess. Soneko wants to go for that cheeky lift up the hill. Yeah. Good positioning from EGM, though, Radiant's stays on the other side of the river. Pycat now moving into the Radiant Ancients. Uh, it was a triple stack, I believe, and uh, he's going to be able to clear it out with some points and split shot. So, his farm starting to jump up and overtaking that of the Void. What a, what a quiet the game after that uh, early just burst of aggression. Everyone's chilling now. There are some heroes that are going to start getting active. Ditya gets treads. With, with just the Mask of you can jungle, but attack. it's difficult to kill someone unless they just happen to be right near you in the lane. He's gone full offense, no points of backtrack. I would expect to see him getting active soon now that they have the Midas on H Apparition and level 7, as well as the Zeus ulti. They should be looking for these little pickoffs around the map wherever possible. Mm. And at the same time for Alliance, Relocate's about to come online. Lion closing on his finger of deaths. I think PR are slightly more well positioned to go for aggression, but I would expect to see some soon from both teams. The big problem for PR is they need the Ravage to take team fights confidently, and Tide is only level four at ten minutes in. I mean, he's even gone for Tranquil. Boots. EGM that's has awesome surpassed him, and that's yeah. that's an awfully Wind Ranger who's level one at three minutes. Tide is literally the lowest in the game in terms of net worth right now, behind the Lion. <laughs> 
I mean, he has just been completely shut down, nowhere to farm. It's th the Juggernaut just bullied oh. him out of the lane, along with a lot of help from my nuts. Boy down bottom, smoke rotation, will go for Loda, Ice Blast flying through, will connect on the Juggernaut, but is it actually enough here? The ultimate from Zeus gets him down to They're about half health. still chasing? Really? Did you get hacked? Uh, oh so my. I don't know what the plan is. They have no Ravage. He's already used Chrono. You know Jug is Omni. Uh, that was... What do you perceive? Yeah, I didn't... That was, game that was just bad. Unfortunate for them. They The thing is, Chrono's also down now. And Zeus Alt was just used. And Ice Blast, so... Ice Blast will be back up. But they, they may look to punish this and go for some fights of their own on the Radiant side. Reloc... They actually... And they do immediately. I love this decision-making from Alliance. You see that they've made a misplay. They've used up their big ultimates. Go for some sort of rotation. And four heroes into the Dire Jungle. They may catch out the Ancient Apparition. Potentially the Zeus. PR starting to get a bit nervous, as well they should. Yeah, Alliance are really starting to get momentum quickly here. That's what's changed. And J4 now will get caught out. Uh, point blank Ice Blast do a little bit, but yeah, will not keep him alive. The rest of PR starting to come in. Did your raw gets aggressive here. A little Look at this neutral stack. Pycat wants to just farm them, but Lotus can be beaten down in the meantime. Now Stone Gaze forcing them back. And the Juggernaut will use this time to surge in. They continue the chase. Dayara, another death! Oh, oh you can't be dying this much on your void. Oh, Shashar catch him, but he's not level 6. He still has no Ravage. He's just walking in. Hey, guys, I'm from the ocean. Hopefully you won't kill me. Now he, my He does live. He does get live. Slain. That's a close call, though. He plays the sacrificial, or the, the distraction, I guess. Loda. They want this stack so bad, they refuse to leave. The Omni Slash is still down for a while. The Wisp ends up going down. Now an Ice Blast going to connect on Pycat. Don't think the J4 can get this kill with no. the spell shield. He'll TP out, and he'll make it out to safety. The Ancients cleaned up by your Tidehunter. Boy, he desperately needed that. He's actually gone for Tranquil Boots. He's so poor. Yeah. And EGM, Dyer's he finds an Invis, and he goes straight back in, attack. hoping to secure more of those neutrals, but it's too late. Yeah, no detection here. That was just such an awkward rotation from Cheshire Cat, though. He's oh, like, he's going to die. Oh, no. He's used his Anchor Smash, Don't miss too. this one, EGM. Oh. <laughs> I like how he's like, he lines him up for the backside execution <laughs> shot. That's brutal. Oh, Is he going to get boy. cliffed here? Tranquil Rico coming in. Relocate on the way. They'll turn this one around onto the Rubik. They say nobody touches our Ginger and gets away with it. But hey, Dityara comes in with a Chronosphere, brings down the Wisp. Ice Blast flies through. Also, Pycat taking a lot of damage, almost out of mana, and now he's in trouble. They will trade their Rubik, but <laughs> good fight for Power Rangers, and looks like EGM will make it out. This game got messy. <laughs> yeah. They're going to push bottom now with Loda. Tower taking left damage. There is a Ravage online. Tidehunter having to go tranquil boots. Ugh, that is that hurts so brutal. Oh, one cool mechanic I wanted to mention that we haven't talked about is Stone Gaze and uh, Omni Slash. Of course, Stone Gaze. Yeah. Just that amplifying is cool. the physical damage that you'll take and Omni Slash just you out an insane amount. That's a really nice synergy. Finger use bottom lane, then your Omni Slash. Oh, oh. Nice take down here by my nuts. Although he's going to get slapped and punished for this. Yeah. Slapping your nuts as Loda runs away. They stole Omni Slash, though, it looks like. Oh, Ice Blast will connect on EGM, but not Loda. Potato. Oh, my. Just gets zapped on down. A Sineko comes in. Yeah, he did steal the Omni. There you go. That's a big That's a big spell to steal. Yeah. It's also the level 2 Omni Slash. Mm -hmm. middle tower Sineko can kill a lot of... He could even kill the Juggernaut. Especially if he pops Mask of Madness, then he's definitely dead. Yeah, the, the Jug is at that point now where he has to be very careful. He's gone this Glass Cannon build, Radiant's can put out a lot of damage, but yeah, if he gets Radiant caught in like a telekinesis fortified. and... This is the this is the Assassin's build for Jug. You go this build, you you are the one getting the jump and killing that. Otherwise, yeah, like you said, you're, you're food. Mm -hmm. but Yasha now up on the Jug as well. They're going to move into this Tier 1 tower. They've got the Healing Ward down, but Radiant's Ice Blast will fly through. This time it'll be off the mark, and Alliance will back out. It's very dangerous to go for this push. Chrono is about to cool down, and Ravage is still online. So, Radiant's top they they realize attack. this is not the right timing for us. We need to go back to spreading the map, finding pickoffs. Do not group up at a tier one for the mass AOE combo. Mm -hmm. Did you raw? Still trying to find some farm. And about a thousand behind the Medusa in terms of net worth. Uh, just um, power tried not to go with that early mask of madness he picked up. Medusa getting very close to a Lincoln's. Core pieces are online, and Radiance Alliance have done a really good job this attack. game stacking their Ancients in their jungle, just making very effective use of the map, and I mean, you, you see it on the bottom line of this Dusa. It's not really much of a Lincoln's game. Like, what's it going to block that's of huge significance? 
Telekinesis. Yeah, I guess that instant lift, but Medusa's not very mobile, right? Like, if you yeah. if they want to jump her, she's going to get caught. Lightning bolt. Yeah, I don't know. It I, does solve a lot of her issues in terms of just mana regen, and it gives her some stats, but it's not the most cost-efficient stats. If you just want stats, Scotty is your go-to item. Manta's great on Medusa. Yeah. Though PR do have a decent amount of AoE and nuke power. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm, I, it doesn't really feel like a great Lincoln's game, and especially when you have Wisp to back you up. So far, the Wisp has more been moving with the Jug, yeah. but I think as the game goes on, your centerpiece for these fights that kind of stands there and needs to tank is the Dusa. The Jug looks to jump in and be a glass cannon. I think so. he could have at the very least looked to go for a Yasha and a first item as a farming tool and then decide, do I need to go Lincoln? So I want to go Manta, Rush He right could in theory else. still sit on the Perseverance and just build something else, but it's a very expensive item. Not yeah, to say, not, not, not really known as a, a great value item in mm, that scenario. The, <laughs> the, the Perseverance there. Well, we'll see what he does. Uh, ultimately, he's still farming pretty well, and that's kind of what's important for this Dusa. Moving into the Ancients once more, it looks like another triple stack here, and yeah, easy pickings for the Gorgon. Seneko does get a Blink Dagger on the Rubik, though, which is... Uh, blink and Omni, and he almost walks right into my nuts! Oh, my. Oh, oh, oh he, Omni Slash just wore off. Oh. He just lost it. Oh, my gosh. That he never got Seneko. to use it. What a sad boy. He does not have a TP. Blinks into the trees to the south. They're still pursuing him. Trying for some jukes. This could be a good use of time if he keeps four of them distracted. This looking is whack a mole. The yeah, they're they're waiting to jump top in the meantime. If anyone TP's in, yeah. EGM phase boots, but still nothing too scary in the inventory. That Wind Ranger, no mech coming out on either side. This was a pretty poor faceless void for Ditya Ra. Yeah, I thought his farm would be a little better given how fast he got that. The two deaths madness. really hurt him. Mm, yeah. Ice Blast coming in mid lane. Hex goes on to Seneco. He tries to just walk out of mid. That is not how you get away. Oh my that goodness. Was a close one. Tide does clear out a set of Ancients. Chrono was used top lane in the meantime, but they relocate out to safety. Nicely played by Ake. Getting Mr. Potato out of there. And now at full HP. So are they going to come back together? It looks attack. like. There's no one will. there. They'll be fine. Yeah. In the meantime, Loda Dyer's takes the tier one mid. Alliance just move fallen. after move going their way. <laughs> Yep, so let's just go to the graph here, see how things are going. Not as big of a lead as you would think, only about 3,000 Top lane, gold Shackle, onto J4, caught out by a power shot, will end up going down. Wow, Bye -bye. I'm surprised he hung around for that, okay. Well, just a good catch there by EGM. Windranger with phase boots and with tether, just deceptively yeah. fast and difficult to, to stay away from. All right, now the graph upgrades. Now about 4,000 gold. I was gonna say, I feel like this, this lead should be a little more substantial than that. We'll see initiation onto EGM in the top lane. Seneko comes in to start it off, but no Ake's there, tethered up. Yeah, 45 seconds till it comes up. Still the healing, actually doing a lot of work. Ake now playing ring around the rosy, tether up in a few seconds. Won't be able to find it. Wisp first to go down, but now Pycat, he's ready to join the party. Stone Gaze has been used. They have and Ravage to turn this. Mm, they're not gonna chase. With Stonegaze down and a Ravage, PR have an opening, but they will not will not choose. If they had Chrono, I think, and the Void wasn't so low, I think they might go, but it would be a bit risky. So Void with the Mithril Hammer, is this just a BKB coming out, or is he going to go the Maelstrom build and just look for damage? Mm. It really could be either. Yeah. You, I think it just hurts your farm too much. If you go, if you, you go, because Juggernaut and Medusa are already out farming him. If you go for a BKB, your economy really struggles. So, I'm leaning towards Maelstrom, as it does. It doesn't seem like PR is going to be able to win this game anytime soon, right? Yeah. Dyer's so by that line of thinking, attack. going for something that will help keep your farm up is probably the way to go. But we'll see. It's you still need a BKB this game. You're up against Hex. That alone requires BKB to deal with. But I think, I think you go for it later. Do you think Power Rangers should be putting more effort into stopping this ancient farming that's happening here on the radiant side of the map? Whether it's trying to contest it, whether it's just blocking it with wards. I mean, they've left this unchecked, and I feel like PyCat is so big mostly because of ancients. <laughs> they definitely should try to stop it. It's just difficult because Alliance always have a support or two nearby. They've been dropping sentries to keep it dewarded. It's not as though PR has made no effort, but it's yeah, it's just difficult. It they only difficult. now get their blink on tide as well. Ooh. So 20 minutes in, they've basically only had the void to initiate for most of this game. I guess the Rubik, but we haven't really seen Seneko use it to set up any fights. And here comes a smoke from Loda. It's a personal smoke. Is he going for the Roche solo? Looks I like he will be. So very common Andrew. side effect of this build is you get the free easy solo. <laughs> Yeah, it went for that Sanjin Yasha. We saw uh, Loda pick up Sanjin Yasha last game on that troll, I think. But an uh, item that he favors. And this is nice and easy. Yeah, even before you have the completed Sanjin Yasha, you can still do it. But it's a lot easier at this stage. 
Down bottom, Ice Blast flies through. They want to jump on my nuts, and Ice Blast just barely misses him. They are in the vicinity. They have no idea. Somebody just pinged on the Roche, but I didn't get to see the color. It doesn't seem that they are too suspicious. Easy peasy, low the grass, and something just the immortal. If you go in there and you get Sof Omni, it's also going to go really badly. Yeah. The other thing was that they were keeping Ake in the neighborhood, so defensive relocate out Dyer's was an option. The way that Alliance went for that was well orchestrated. It wasn't just a YOLO solo Roche. They had yeah. backup plans in case they did get caught. And they were showing Pycat top to kind of draw attention away. Mm -hmm. So, I well executed Roshan. Yeah, agreed. Dityra ready with another Chrono. It is level 2, so a slightly shorter cooldown. He did go back to the Maelstrom, uh, not the BKB, so slight farm ex uh, accelerator and looking for some damage output. Already used the Mask of Madness. Is he going to jump on Pycat? No, and it's the right call because there's a Wisp right nearby, ready to relocate him out, even with a regen rune in the bottle. Oh man, that can be dangerous. So he did go Maelstrom for Dityra, yeah. which given the way th they just cannot seem to find these big team fights, that this is definitely the way to go. And it's one of the things Wisp just excels at as a hero. It's very good at spreading the map and punishing lineups that want you to group up because as Dyer's Wisp you generally don't have to. Under attack. Shotchlo going for the mobility tools on his Zeus. Force Staff and Blink now online. Pretty straightforward stuff there. Maybe a Yule's in the future. They're looking. They're still chilling at top together. Now they're going to let Ake sojourn out into the lane. But they do Dyer's have up ahead Pycat. Very long spread out bottom line of heroes here attack. for Alliance. They're yeah. super far back. Trying to bait it out and see if they can make something happen. Pycat is starting to get pretty big though. He's got that next ultimate orb to go with the Dyer's Lincolns and he is, is tanking up. Six, nearly 1600 HP on strength threads. Radiant structures ultimate from fortified. Zeus flies out. They find Dyer's Minot. Shotchlo blinks over the tree line but gets caught by Minot. Fingered, stunned, and hexed. He will not find the kill. Compliments of healing from Ake, and it'll be They're a one bringing in the ice away. blast, and it's going to connect, killing off Sly, and now looking for more. They've got a Ravage inbound. Loda got off the Omni Slash inside the Chrono from Ditya Ra and just wrecks the Void. Oh boy, it's a one for two, but now PR in big, He's big trouble. Omni, Omni slash. slash level three, but Loda has Aegis, and Suniko does not want to waste it. Yep. Radiance middle Although he also doesn't want to die attack. here, so... Okay, has the Blink. Power Shot comes in just a little too late. So, good blink with level 3 Omni Slash. They need a play out of this because their chronos haven't really gotten anything done. We haven't Dyer's seen a Ravage in ages. Is under attack. I, I think this Rubik has to come up aces here. Mm -hmm. And how much time is left on this Aegis? Ice Blast will come in to connect on two. Looks like two a and a half A lot of time, minutes. yeah. They've still got Two plenty. minutes at least. Yeah, this is, this is a tough time for PR. Alliance getting a lot of momentum. Only 7,500 gold in their favor, but it feels like a lot more than that. And it's an, it's an arms race to see if they can burst Pycat inside of all the ults, but it just they're not even close right now. Yeah. You know, it's he's trying to build as defensive as possible. Omni Slash does come out, kills off Loda. No, no not quite. It bounces oh. EGM. Then the insta blink out as the Omni end, so at least Suniko not costing his own life. Nice plays there, but a noble effort. unable to crack the Aegis. It's only got two minutes left, though. Yeah, unfortunately, he's so close to level 11. He could have held on to that Omni Slash a bit longer and got a, another rotation out of it, but... It's going to expire right around the time it comes off cooldown. So, no more Omni Slash for you, Mr. Rubik. What a sad story. Now Void's so poor at this point. Not only is Void poor, but Alliance, they just have more carry power. You've got this Juggernaut and this Deuce atop in the net worth chart. And, and what's the Power Rangers' response for both of these heroes? Just look at the, the CS for this Jug and Medusa. 150 plus CS on both of them. 5-0 and 3 on the Jug, 3-1 yeah, and 1 on the Medusa. It, a lot of it comes back to the stacking because they've been... They haven't been, like, AFK farming. We've Radiant's seen the Medusa pushing top with the whole attack. team's behind her. Loda has been running around fighting constantly, and they still keep their CS up, and... It's just back to all the stacking shenanigans from early in the game by Ake, by EGM to some extent. Mm -hmm. Alliance, this is most of their old roster, and... Oh, well, at least, not not most, but a decent chunk of the old alliance, and a lot of their success was just built around being super efficient. Like, they were efficient, they were the masters of efficiency even before Cloud9 was, I would say. Well, my nuts gonna be in an awkward position here. Seneco scouts him out, Dyer did get the Omni slash scary throw. board down. Okay, gets a pick on Cheshire Cat, now the reinforcements are here. EGM clears out the trees, throws a shackle, and it'll latch. Shotch low gets taken out, and not quite what PR had in mind. Seneco will be able to TP home. But a one for two, not the trade they wanted. No, not the trade they wanted, and this is with the Down ticking, bottom. ticking okay. time bomb Medusa. Okay. Oh, there you go. Dityra gets a solo pick, Chrono for Wisp. I mean, that's nice, but 
they just can't kill the cores. Yeah, like, exactly. get, Getting the Wisp kill is good because they're not getting anything else, but it's not good enough, really. Mm -hmm. And Alliance, despite not having their Wisp or their Lion, just going to push directly down mid. Yeah, Pycat very close to his Scotty now, just about 600 away from that point Dyer's booster. They will take out the tier 2 tower in the mid. And PR are not going to be able to contest it too much. Snako gets caught by a Shackle. It'll latch. Cheshire Cat with a decent Ravage will bring down the Wind Ranger. Pycat still has the Stone Gaze. Loda, no Omni, no more spin. Gets locked down. Ditya doing what damage he can, but Pycat's here with a nice Stone Gaze. Ake's relocated in. Keeps Loda alive. They get the kill on the Tide. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, Ditya doing what he can. Backtracks the finger. That's cute, but not enough to stay alive. As Power Rangers continue to get picked apart, and Dusa gets her Scotty. Stone Gaze, and you just gotta run. And they just can't burst anyone. Yeah. That was Loda without the Aegis. He hasn't gone super tanky. SNY, decent survivability. Tanky ish, but not yeah, like. Exactly. Like, he's still got quite a bit of right click here with the Basher and Mask of Madness. Yeah, and he's about to have an Abyssal, which is. That, that seems to be kind of like the, the point of no return for these juggernauts in the games we've seen today, where mm -hmm. once he gets the Abyssal, it's what do you do? I mean, he's, it's just a free kill anytime he catches someone and has the cooldown available. And we've already seen he can just solo kill the Void. In general, the Void picks just seem to be getting punished by mm -hmm. by juggernauts. It's very hard to get the jump and oftentimes the Omni slashes if he gets it off, it's just your downfall. Yeah, because you're always using time walk to initiate on him. Right, right. The, the juggernaut's very elusive. You can go for the Eternal Envy build where you buy a blink dagger, blink in Chrono, and then if like let's say you screw it up and he gets off Omni or whatever, you can at least time walk out, but it, this this void's not even at the point where you can think about buying a blink because he's got no items really. Mask of Madness and Maelstrom at 27 minutes. Yeah, but it, it's it's sort of like the the ultimates have pretty similar cooldowns for Void and um, and Juggernaut, but it just feels like Juggernaut can do so much more when he's stuck without his ultimate. He doesn't have Omni Slash. He still has magic immunity. Can still put out some decent Radiant damage. Still has healing ward. Void attack. without his ultimate. Now that Radiant it's been nerfed to this long cooldown, it just feels like. Whenever he doesn't have Chrono, you gotta make every Chrono count, you know? Kinda like Death Prophet. I'll hold that thought, though, as Loda in the mid lane, he'll get caught, and this Chrono will count. They'll blow him up, and Shockflow will get credit for that kill. Nice little gank there. They end the Wicked Six Streak. Ditya almost gets a latch, gets a latched Shackle, but we'll be okay. And that's Scotty. They have Sonico in position here with the Blink Impale if they want to go in, but I don't know if they can fight this. They'll do it! Ravage in 15. Is it actually enough? Beautiful Shackle on two. J4 and Sineko locked in place. Nine seconds on the Peace. Ravage there. Pycat the will use his ultimate. <laughs> Still gets the kill on the, the Io. It's like the slowest anchor swing I've ever seen. As Sineko just about to fall, but gets inside of the fog. They can't finish him off yet. Ravage. Blink forward. What a time for a Ravage to come up. They get the kill on Pycat. My nuts with a stun on two finds the kill on the tide. J4, you are the hero. Are you the hero that can find the kills? Maybe Shotchlow can help you out. My nuts getting low and will get taken out by one more chain lightning. But it's a bloody massacre. Oh, four man, heroes about to go down on both sides. If they can finish J4 off, it's a four for four. A Vost would be very happy with this game. 23 <laughs> to 19, your score. A four kill lead. No buyback. Even for a line. No. Good trade for PR, though. They get, yes, they get the gold exchange good. out of that. They, uh, they also finally kill Medusa and Jug. What a time to do it. Yep. Jug just completed a BKB, had not had a chance to deliver it yet, and uh, actually is going to TP back better than fly it out, it looks like. And your Medusa closing in on a butterfly. Quarter staff out, Dyer's the rest of it slowly being built attack. towards, and once she gets that, it's going to be much tougher to trivial. kill her inside of Chrono, yeah. so and, a crucial kills. And a pipe of insight coming out for EGM, which is completed now. So that, I feel, is, is just as big as those items, I think. I mean, so much magic damage on the side of PR mitigate a lot of what uh, Zeus and Titaner can do in these fights. Cheshire Cat is just so sad this game. <laughs> yeah. Goes back for a solo ring at 29 minutes because he never got to buy our cane boots because his all flame went so horribly wrong. So, Refresher, Age is off. I don't even know... I think if you Soul Rain Ravage, then Refresh Soul Rain again, I think you have enough mana, but either way, it's he's having some problems, man. I'm talking about him farming fallen. Refresher, which is also sounding ambitious. Yes, very much so. I think that's the, the bigger question. By the time he gets it, I think he'll have more than enough mana. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, not, it's, it's not all over yet for PR, Radiant's though. The gold lead is about is like 9,000, 4,000 experience. Alliance in command of this game, but... There's still a sliver of hope for the Power Shackle. Rangers. Another beautiful Shackle to get this started. Pycat does get caught in a telekinesis, Dyer's and looks like that will keep Shotchel alive, but I think 
Loda just so brave here. BKB on, will get caught inside of a Chrono. Ice Blast flies through, but the damage, just simply put, is not there. Omni Slash brings down J4. They stole it again. Now, it's not as good on Rubik. It's still a nice spell to steal. He'll use it now. Bringing down EGF. Even bringing down Loda. It's a gigantic win for Soniko. The big double kill plays. Now Ake on the run, he may not survive this one. There's the blink forward, telekinesis, and it'll be Power Rangers that come out way ahead in this defense. Oh, not kill. over yet. They'll use the finger to bring down the void. Now my nuts will get taken out. Seneko on the backside, Pycat the lone defender, but do they actually have the damage to kill him? I'm not sure they do. Loda, he'll buy back, gets right back into the party. Nice four staff from Cheshire Cat. Buys some time. Tower is under oh, attack. can he live? Radiant's okay. Bottom tower is under that was a pretty good hold for Power Rangers, though. Yes, forcing out the Juggernaut buyback, getting three kills. I said it earlier, Andrew, I'll say it again. Sonico has to come up big for them to Radiant's turn this game around. And my is god, is he ever. 8-4-4. Eight, four, and four. Big playmaker with the Tidehunter getting shut down. The Zeus pick having Dyer's been all right, but not nearly as dominant as what you would Radiant's like to see out of that hero. This Rubik making huge things Radiant's happen. This is really risky here. Loda moves right into the Roche pit, but it will get scattered out. Ancient Apparition ults in. Roche only at half health, but Loda bought back at the end of that last fight. If he dies here, this is very, very scary. Picks up a haste rune, so we'll be a little bit safe. Smoke from Power Rangers. There is a Ravage. Any BKB before the Ravage they, comes they out? Desperately want the Aegis, but Blake Ravage Lavage. connects! Can they steal the Aegis now? They haven't actually got it yet. No, Roche goes down the Void Grab the Aegis, gets the last hit, and then Densum's dying anyway, but Kudner says he's got a second life to work with here. Uh oh. Right. They've already used the Ravage though, this could be rough. Bash. You're wrong. He got bash. Oh, time walk out, not gonna make it, not enough backtracks. Now Power Rangers, sure they stopped the Roche, but it's gonna come at a grave cost. Cheshire Cat, he's on the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> just getting tickled. <laughs> Finally falls, but Wind Rage is like that. That was not exactly how I thought that fight was going to work out. <laughs> yeah, that Boy was... jumps in, steals the Aegis, then gets off his Chronosphere, but it just doesn't matter. They didn't even use Jug Omni Slash in that fight. God. That's rough. It was a nice Ravage, but. I oh, guess sorry, he didn't end up using Chrono. What am I talking about? The, the Ravage and then just jumps yeah, in and yeah, steals no, the Aegis. No, he still has the Chrono. Buyback status on the Void Dyer's is negatory. He needs about 30 attack. gold to make it happen. They've already lost their Tier 3 tower. So PR in a rough position. They've got a Glyph and they may need to use it. Dyer's middle oh, this is, free, are under attack. This is free really hard without Ravage. I don't know. Even with it, it's hard. Yeah. And that was with them not BKB dodging it. Like, if, if the Juggernaut gets that off, then it's just... He just turns around and instantly kills a bunch of people, which he still ended up doing. Yep. They even right. stole Healing Ward. So, oh. kind of nice if the next fight comes out just to keep them in it a bit longer, but... Mm -hmm. You need something like the Omni Slash really to get those yeah. those big pickoffs. Rubik's almost level 16, so it'll be uh, another minute that he can attack. keep spells that he steals. Uh, he managed Dyer's to get that Omni Slash again. Could be a could be a Tide Turner. I'd love to see the <laughs> Rubik get a, get an Agonims here, give that Omni Slash a little extra, a little zest to it. Huh? That'd be fun. Yeah, it's it seems to be the spell to steal for him. That's yeah. for sure. Well, and it's also difficult for the Jug's not an easy hero to prevent Rubik steals because everything has such a long cooldown so you know you might get that perfect Omni off but if right. you're Blade and Fury Healing Ward are on cooldown then you also you don't save Healing Ward right like you, right. you're pushing you start to lose HP so you drop the Healing Ward then you don't have it to drop after Omni Slash Loda I think in that fight mid where the where I ended up getting the two kills on the Rubik they he used Blade Fury just when they they had an initial jump in from a shackle so then he didn't have Blade Fury to use afterwards so it's at that point impossible to prevent the steal Yep. All right, so just a quick pause here. We'll get right back into it. Lotus buyback still on cooldown. That's like the one thing right now that sort of like went in Power Rangers' favor in that last fight is they forced Loda to buy back, and they could have killed him around that Roche pit. It's true. His economy is still so good, though. Yeah. Like, this Medusa and Juggernaut are just colossally out farming PR right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, Digira gets hacked. There's an Omni Slash, and now an well, easy kill on that face. <laughs> I've, I haven't seen a Void shut down this hard in a while. Three and eight. Just getting destroyed. I hear that Piccolo being played. Shot slow in the mid. In a little trouble. Pycat, he's slithering quickly. Trying to close the gap and hit him with the Scotty, but will not be able to find the kill. Seems like Ghost Scepters are the name of the game for Power Rangers. Three out of the five. Rocking the, uh, the Ghost duration there. They're going to keep on pushing. And... 
Void dead, has buyback, but forcing this out would be huge. So Nico, you can't heal your buildings, unfortunately. He's trying to do what he can to turn this one around, but it's not Tricky. easy. Cheshire Cat in an awkward position, does get scattered out, has a Ravage, but now stuck inside of a Yule's. Not going to be able to blink. Loda will use his BKB a little prematurely. That was the 8-second BKB charge and will not have it for the rest of this fight, and I think that'll be enough for Alliance to just back out, save it for another day, and, yeah, come at it fresh. Still, they push in, they they do some structural damage to buffer buildings, they chip away at the tier 3. They still assert They don't lose dominance. anything either. Yeah. They didn't manage to steal your void, though. Uh, City on his gold, you don't have to buy back, so PR will be happy with that, but... It's, just look at the net worth. 10k net worth, 18k on the Dusa, 18k on the Juggernaut, it's... It's just not even close. Yeah. Now, Ditya Ra, he has another Mithril Hammer. I feel like this one has to be the BKB. Yeah, this is definitely a BKB, but... The thing is, after he gets BKB, he still needs, like, two more items. Yeah, that's kind of Because by the time he thinking. completes that next one, Deuce is probably going to have Butterfly. Juggernaut going to have an Abyssal Blade and something else if he wants it. Although yeah. Loda may just end up sitting on this Bash. He really needs to be, like, another item ahead where, of where he is right now. He needs BKB. At least even. But, yeah. yeah, ideally an item ahead. But, like, or, no, of where he is right now, so he'd be even to do so is kind of what I mean. Like, if yeah, he was, yeah. had the BKB and was, like, just about to complete the MKB, I'd be like, okay, they're in okay shape. They've got a full deal with this Dusa. But right now, yeah, I mean, she's, like, basically a talisman of evasion away. That's not going to take too long to farm up. And Loda... The, uh, the deciding factor here, probably coming out soon, LD. 3,200 gold. I think Radiant's there's an Abyssal on the horizon. Mm. Could be. He could go for Butterfly, which is nice against Void. And when Void's this poor... You know there's you, no MKB coming. MKB's yeah. probably not in his future. Plus, he's just shown that he's going BKB next. So True. I think Butterfly would be quite nice for Loda. And you get double Butterfly on him and Pycat, and Omni Slash is oh. Oh, wow. he's going to be disgustingly good time. as well. You get oh a ton of gosh. attack speed. Yeah. All right, so Dusa has a full butterfly now. That's an item hiding on the carrier. Under attack. Well. That's big Dusa. Mm -hmm. Big old Gorgon. Cheshire Cat, 2,600 gold on the tide. Still not really approaching refresher territory. I feel like PR needs a veil. Oh, they have so much magic damage right now. Dusa, like, I don't see how else they're going to even come close to bursting. Try and counteract the pipe a little bit. And, and it's fine to say ignore the Medusa sometimes, but... Well, the there comes a point where that's gets, not possible. When she gets to the base and she's hitting yeah. your axe, you can't really ignore her, right? So you need a way to kill her. I think Veil is one of the most cost-efficient items they could buy to try and do that. J4 went for Ghost Scepter, good against Omni Slash, obviously. Uh, but I think as one of their upcoming items, even the Zeus going for it wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, the pipe on Wind Ranger was definitely a, a smart pick up this game. Yeah, that's a real it's a it's an item that hardly ever gets built, but yeah. I think I think it's still so a bit valued. underrated. Yeah, oh definitely. It's not a go-to every game, but some matches, man, it is it is value town, especially when you're trying to break that high ground. Radiance bottom so Alliance will group up and speak in a high ground, try to make it happen, it seems first ice blast will come through and it will be off the mark. Now that's actually a pretty important tool in terms of defending the high ground. Now they have 25 seconds. They're yeah. all at full HP. Although, I don't know we mentioned it. AA does have an uh, Aghanim Scepter and level 3 ultimate. So yes. He, he does pack quite a punch right now. Yeah, I did want to mention, Pipe has been buffed to this patch. It's 100 gold cheaper, and it lasts t 2 seconds longer, from 10 until 12. So, uh, I think it's a, a really strong item in these situations. They're going to push through. Yep. Load up Blade Fury and then just backing off. Oh, the wraparound coming out from PR. Daya's they do have two buybacks here. Zeus and Tide will have a second life if they need it. Ditya Ra comes hopping in. Uh. Solo Chrono onto Loda. Splits the fight up a little bit, but not what they are hoping for. Relocate. Buys the initial target some time. Now the Omni Slash brings down the Tide before he can ravage. Good thing he's got a buyback. He's going to use it. Oh, Ditya Ra in trouble. The Abyssal Blade comes out. Pycat just stands his ground, laying into the dire side. And now Power Rangers on their last leg. A big Ravage from Cheshire Cat secures the kill on my nuts, but Alliance still have all their cores alive. And there's no way for Power Rangers to deal with the power of the Pycat. He's in the front lines. The Tier 3 tower has gone down, and now it's just Barracks standing. They have nothing left except for Ice Blast, and everyone's pretty healthy. This looks like it might be our... Our second lane of Rax as Alliance look to force that deciding game three. Remember, winner of this series guaranteed to go to China. What at least as a wild card team. J4 will not win the duel against PyCat, I don't think. Dyer's yeah, okay, he'll survive. You call attack. that a victory. This is Jug. looking like a game three, Andrew. Dyer's it really is. Loda. So that last fight, Void Chronos one hero. Then he gets Yules because he didn't BKB. 
Then Tidehunter blinks into priority. the Chronosphere and gets shackled. <laughs> that was the most unfortunate initiation I've seen yeah. in a long time. And, and PR. Loda got relocated out of the Chronos. Yes. Too. So he didn't even get to do that much damage to Loda. That was just, yeah, it couldn't have gone much better for Alliance or too much worse. Actually, so like the, it was a very, when, whenever you have to run like that and they're already retreating, it's very easy to whiff your Chrono as opposed to just when you like insta jump you them. And catch them, yeah. But, oh, God, what a painful way. Salt in the wound to end this game number two. All right. And this time we actually have a game It's three. a real game three. This is not a hoax, guys. This is this is real. The deciding match. We'll see who gets to actually go on and uh, who will be dipping down into that lower bracket. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. Our final game of the day for the uh, Dota 2 Asian Championship coverage for the European Qualifier coming up after this. I'm Zayori, joined by LD. Stick with us because we're coming right back.